Okay. Yeah, so I have, um, I'm sorry, my voice is trembling a little bit because um, I have Chase. Yeah, I have a checking and I have a savings and then I have um, a 401k account. So I have like 15 or 16,000 in my checking. I have like 250,000 in savings and then I have like my, my kids school fund. 389 days. That's how long we gathered evidence on the scam call center until we finally had them raided. So we've noticed in the past that raids on scam call centers all have a similar outcome. They'll arrest them, take some photos, and then they'll release them the same day. Even a big one that Jim Browning did with BBC, I think that guy got out for like 600 bucks. So it's safe to say that the punishments have not been severe enough to deter them from scamming. The approach that we had was to work with a group that couldn't be bribed or wouldn't be caught up in corruption. The coordination was between our contacts in the US and Indian law enforcement. What we really wanted to do was get the two main guys arrested. They're the ones operating the call center and they're taking majority of the money. So the impact it would have to get those arrested is much greater than say arresting 20 or 30 of the rookies or what they call a fresher. We typically aren't able to show you everything that happens because a lot of scammers watch our videos and we don't want to give away secrets. So we waited this time until the raid happened to share the story with you. What you're about to see is a lot of behind the scenes footage of the work that was done and what happened over those 389 days. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry again, thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> let's see how he- Oh yeah, let's see how he does. He's like, oh, I got this easy. Look at him, he's like- So that's the manager. That's one of the managers, yep. And that's a floor manager. They just changed shifts too. And these guys are up in the corner here, the little creeper corner. Let's see if they're gonna show. Oh, dang it, they're right here. I thought they were gonna show. So that's the other side yeah, though. Yeah, that's him from the other side. Yeah, so that's where it was right there. Yep. And there's their smoking room in there, but these guys are over here. I don't know if they're working on another um, another scam or not, let's see. Um, but they're all huddled over there for whatever reason. So that must be one of the managers. Uh, oh, that, that is a manager. Um, so I think that's this computer actually. Oh. They are, these guys are looking up. I don't know if you want to record this. <laughs> I don't think you necessarily want to. Um, geez. Right in the middle of their office. Yep, that's disgusting. I'm not gonna look at that. But I'm pretty sure it's these guys up here. This is, I mean, it's nuts, guys. That's a, yeah. that is literally a criminal operation. Yep. Right there. Scamming people out of tons of money. All right, where do we start here? I remember the first time when Midnight told me about the center. And I, I honestly had no idea what I was getting myself into because. I didn't know how much they were stealing. I didn't know how much it would like impact me. It just, I just thought it was another call center. I remember the first time getting access. This was in the summertime of 2022, let's just say. And I remember watching the screen, watching the CCTV. And we even had the people's call center in the summertime of 22. And we couldn't put anything out there. We couldn't put their CCTV on the screens or anything, obviously, because it would burn the situation we had just gotten access and we're working and investigating and all that and we were excited about it because we knew this was going to be big so i just remember trying to do everything that i could to collect information without messing it up because it was a pretty big center there's some cctv all that there's two different locations and i remember trying to piece together like how do i do all of this because i want to get these guys arrested um i planted that parcel 
uh, hey, we need to get a parcel and now we're gonna get an address which we can tie to this call center. This was something we really needed was a US uh, money mule to be able to tie to them. So now we have a physical location in the US, we have a physical location in India and we have groups working together, which is huge. Why is that important? To be able to tie like conspiracy between different groups, right? So you have the US side, like the conspiracy of elder fraud and money fraud and all of that. And then you have the, the part in the US of them kind of both working together. So being able to tie evidence, that was my- Evidence, baby. That was my no, that's government uh, words. But yeah. that's what I see it as is like, people that are interested, law enforcement that's interested, it's cool that you have, hey, there's a call center here doing X, Y, Z, but how can we tie that into the US? Is there a US tie? And this can be one, this can be Yeah, a because tie. if they're not scamming somebody in the US, yeah, then the US is not gonna be you know, on the radar. Yeah, exactly, so. Or they're not gonna be on the radar for the US, I should say. So I'm gonna paint the picture for you of what we know so far. The scammer group is run by a criminal organization known as Sultanate, and they own two call centers. One is in the Oyo 77 Hotel in Ljubljana. We're gonna call that Call Center One. The other center is about 10 minutes away from Call Center One in a rundown Oyo Hotel, and we're gonna call that Call Center Two. These are the names you need to know. Jimmy Martin. Now, Jimmy's a mainstay at Call Center One. He's a closer and sometimes a manager, and he pretends to be a government agent and pushes the victims to send the money. Alex is in charge of all the money laundering. He manages and coordinates with the closers on how the victims are going to send money through wire transfers, Bitcoin, gift cards, or FedEx packages to the scammers. Natin is the head manager of Call Center One. Now, he doesn't do calls per se, but he manages all the reporting of payroll, call logs, attendance sheets, and he reports all of this up to the owners. Now, Mayank is another one of the closers, but he works closely with the other managers around the call centers, and you'll see him at both call centers. He essentially has the same role as Jimmy Martin. Then you have Sandeep and Santosh Yadov, brothers that are closers in the second call center. We're gonna have a lot more information on them later. And finally, we have Krishna Yadov, the right-hand man of the owner, and the owner himself, Cherry. These are the guys who benefit the most from these scams, and they're my main targets to get arrested. Holy sh And what if we had, like, that they're, like, in cahoots with them, you know what I mean? So that... That's the Punjabi police. Yeah. Parked outside the front. Because this car was here before, and it was parked right here where this van was. As I went through everything, this was, we're here in August of 22, but there was one day in August that was really interesting to me. And it was super late. It was late for me at the office. And I had Brandon come in because I'm like, that's, that looks, it's kind of like a Range Rover or a G-Wagon looking type vehicle. And it was a police uh, vehicle. And there was a guy that was sitting outside. It was backed in. I, I remember it vividly in my mind. The guy was backed in and he was almost on guard. Holy cow. What if he walks into that thing? Call know. center. That's what I'm saying. That will be insane. See, he's looking around to see. This All is right. the, this is walking into the, the type of corruption that. Yeah. People get mad at us if we're not like doing enough. <laughs> it's like you can show the world. I'd never seen, it had been months, I'd never seen uh, um, any police go to that place, let alone at five in the morning. This guy is sitting out there just kind of chilling, kind of looking inside, kind of chilling. He goes on his phone at one point. There's a bag that's sitting out there. And all of a sudden, he like makes a, just a straight cut to this bag, opens up the back and throws a bag in there. What's he doing? He's picking up. So he's got a bag he's throwing in the back. But what was in that? All right. Yeah, he's waiting for someone. Someone's, oh, someone's coming out. Someone's coming out right now down the stairs. Oh, there he comes.
Wait, oh, he had a that's shirt. That's another. Yeah. He took his shirt off. That dude took his shirt off. Look, they're like messing. He took his shirt off and went in. He had a bag. He was waiting for another police officer. And they're going to peace out. Hold on. Did he come out of the call center? Yeah. So he came out of the call center. And he had a bag and a t-shirt on, like covering his police thing. And then he put the bag in the back and then took a shirt off and now they're peacing out. I don't think that all of the country is corrupt. I think that just like in any country, guys, you're going to have corruption you know, when there's money involved like this. And it just, it makes it tough when there's this criminal activity, gang activity type. And if you have bad police, it could be one, it could be two, or you could have a politician uh, that's connected. And when you have those things connected, you have people having to pay up to get the protection that they need. First couple months, I just remember a lot of data collection. And then we get into like starting to get into September. You're going to have him wire money out of his account. Like they've already taken 15,000. They're pretending to be the FTC and they're telling him to create a coin flip account and wire money out of his bank account. You're going to try to take everything. I can't really keep, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep watching these and not doing anything because I don't want to get caught. And I was like, there's got to be, I've got to find a smart enough way to not get caught. Thank you for calling Point Flip Customer Support. My name is Ezra and I'm going to help you today. Hi Ezra. I'd like to report a scam victim that just created an account on Coin Flip. Has this been reported to us? Before? I mean, I'm reporting okay. it right now. I, I would need to have the actual victim or owner of the account call us with the number you registered with. Okay. So I'm just going to let you know that they're going to try to steal about $100,000 from him. It's an account on your website. So. Okay. Yeah. I need mean, the sooner he can contact us, the sooner we can get on top of it. He's not going to contact because he doesn't know he's being scammed. So I'm, I, that's why I was contacting you guys. Okay. okay, sir. All right. Do it what you will. Protect him or not. Thank you. I've never seen such high dollar amounts. Now I looked at the spreadsheet obviously and saw some crazy dollar amounts, but to actually see it happening in real time was pretty crazy. But you, I'm going to lose my mind right now. I know. I, I'm like so like, so I know. Am, did I lose all my money now? Well, I, like, well we, need to, we need to stop it. You need to believe me and we need to stop this, okay? That's, we can stop it if you believe me, okay? Oh my God, I really want to keep my stuff right no, now. No, like, don't. I don't know who is the scammer I, because they, they, they were like so professional. I promise you that I'm not steering you wrong. I know this is a very, you're in information technology, okay? From one IT person to another, I'm trying to protect you, okay, from these guys. They just want to steal your money. So um, how can I believe you? You can go to my channel because on your phone. Go to my channel or go to, so go go on your phone right now and go to Google and type in scammer payback onto Safari. You but, but they, they monitor, so if I do that, they will see it. No, that's, that's a lie. So... There, there's nobody monitoring your phone. They just say that so you don't go on your phone and talk to anybody. But you need to call Capital One immediately, cancel it, and you can call me back and we can go to the next step. Okay. Okay, let me call my bank now. All okay. right, thank you so much. Okay, call me back, okay? All right. Bye. All right, bye-bye. And even while I was live streaming, because I had to stop everything and talk to law enforcement while I was on a live stream. We have to complete this procedure. One second, okay? My son's calling it. I need to tell him I'm not, I need to kind of get him off of my tail, okay? Guys, I'm really sorry. I have a very, I'm gonna put some music on. I have a very important phone call to make. Um, I have a very, very important phone call. So I have to, I have to go on mute. This is very important. What the bank would do. It would yeah. really look like me from us. Yeah, for sure. Well, they just, they just did a wire today. So, you know. This is a scenario that I think would preserve any sort of concern about like you know we went too big and it triggered something yeah the scammers wanted to liquidate all of our assets and they were i think they were working on her account for a very long time and even pretending to be her yeah they have a thing on here it's, it's got a <clears throat> notepad it says i have a family back in taiwan and hong kong they're starting business back in hong kong for leather for purses and lady shoes so i'm supporting my family i'll also be moving back to hong kong by the end of this year so this is a trustworthy payment i want you to authorize it so that would be four hundred thousand dollars in the past two days right here. these scammers are not trying to 
take a couple hundred dollars anymore. They're trying to take hundreds of thousands of dollars in a big hit. And they were really successful until midnight and I got a hold of them. Yeah, dude, just go do it. It's fine. They already think that they're in like the clear. You know what I mean? It looks like because this dude is going fast through her computer. So she might still be at the bank doing this. You guys can maybe do a call and do your thing. Let me know. All right. Thanks, man. All right. See you. So that was, I'm streaming right now, and that was a $148,000 wire transfer. I'm like shaking. I don't know if it's because I'm like hungry, but that really put me in a freaking in a spot, man. All right, sorry guys, um, I'm back. As you guys know, there are some very sensitive situations of things that we're doing. We're trying to up our game. I've told you that there's been a project I've been working on for a very long time, and it's still under investigation, okay? Sometimes I run across things that are very disturbing while I'm monitoring certain situations. And it might be while I'm streaming because I still have to stream and monitor and do all this stuff at the same time. And there's some times where I have to step in um, and try to do something. Whatever happens with this situation that I'm investigating, they are the most sickening like literally scammers are the most sickening to me. I'm telling you guys, like, honestly, I almost can't stream right now because I'm really rattled right now. Um, it really pisses me off, man. Dang, it's to see some of these things, it really rattles me because these guys are jerks, man. I, I told you guys earlier that these people are just numbers to them. Um, they laugh about it. I'm telling you, man, when we, when we show everybody what we have, I'm telling you, these people deserve like, so they deserve so much jail time. These are the lowest forms of, j of, of criminality. Even if that's a freaking word, like it's the lowest form. Uh, my hands are like shaking right now. I'm so pissed off right now. gonna go see this rat that's in the scammer's office real quick let me show y'all oh there he is there he is <laughs> there he is he's a good boy <laughs> he's a good boy. yes look at that rat not only is there a rat in the office there's a physical and a computer rat you gotta love a good rat and speaking of remote access a lot of the scammers in these call centers were using ultra viewer to connect to their victims, but sometimes I saw them use AnyDesk, and that's where we stepped in here. As you may have seen before, we work with AnyDesk uh, to ban these IDs. So when scammers are connected to their victims at this call center, we gave AnyDesk the IDs, and then they were banned and disconnected from the victims. They've really stepped up in a number of ways, whether that's helping victims of scams, creating a tech coalition to fight against scammers, or even just being as vocal and visible as they are in the scam bait space to let the world know that they mean business. And on top of all this, their software really is top notch. So if you're in the information technology or systems management space and you use remote access for work, give them a shot. I want to give a big thank you to AnyDesk for standing with us in the fight against scammers and all you've done this year and what we're planning on doing next year to help put an end to all remote access fraud. Now I'm going to take you through some of the times where we mess with these scammers. We're hitting November here and to sit and watch the same stuff every single day for months or for well over a year and, and you can't really interact. That's why I started calling these guys on live streams because I mentally, I mentally had to start getting some of my anger out. Like it was starting to wear on me and make me really mad. And that was just a few months in. So I would figure out also ways to call them and try to mess with them without them knowing it was me. It should be M like in Mary, like in mouse. Oh, M. Okay. Yes. So C N M. Okay. It's not. There should no M should be there, ma'am. It should be M. So C M N then, right? 
It's just C and after that D like in David. Okay, the best thing right now, I can watch her. I'm literally watching her reactions as I'm talking to her. I can see her right now. I can literally see her as I'm talking to her and she's getting so frustrated. So that's why I'm recording it. Then I told you, man, I want you to enjoy your party. Don't you worry about anything. I don't want to spoil your day, okay? That's your day, ma'am, okay? Okay, officer. All right, ma'am. Thank you for your time and patience. Let's talk tomorrow. Uh, don't forget to answer my call. You need to answer my call. I'm going to call you 9, 9 a.m. in the morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time and patience, ma'am. Okay. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Happy birthday once again. This guy thinks he's, like, so good. He thinks he's so good. The new year comes. We end up finding the location of the second call center. So we have call center one, that was the Oyo 77. We find the call center two. After a lot of work with the SP community, um, a lot of staying up late, we ended up getting uh, this rundown building that was actually another hotel that they turned into a call center. And even some of the scammers, we have footage that they were like, living inside of these buildings as well. But I thought it was just give this information over and go do something. Why can't they move faster? And that's why I always kept asking law enforcement, why can't we move faster? This is, there's all these people losing money. I, I'm one person. I can't keep up with everything. So why can't we do something about it? So essentially that's where I learned um, that you have to work almost backwards in India and you have to go to the local law enforcement first. Uh, you can't just go to CBI and say, go get these bad guys. So they needed, again, certain information from me. And I was able to collect all that information in January and February. I was able to start to get names of people. I was able to start to get personal phone numbers, social media accounts, a number of different things, pictures, you name it. And this is where I mapped out the entire organization a lot more. Um, you heard me talking about Jimmy Martin and talking about Alex. There was also a number of different players. In Call Center 2, there was a gentleman named Santoshi Adov, and he was one of their top closers and kind of like a floor manager, a guy really high up within Sultanate. And um, you could see him when we were on Call Center 2's CCTV, you could see him walking up and down the call center and helping people out. He kind of became public enemy number one for me after a while because he was posting on social media a lot about how he works harder. He, he has a line that I'll never forget, and it was, shine so bright, it burns their and eyes. He's showing himself partying in Goa at uh, a festival. He's showing sitting in, in vehicles and, and being successful, being on the beach, all these different types of things, but it's with stolen money from U.S. citizens. And he had a brother. He had his little brother, Sandeep Yadav, and um, they would travel up from Gujarat over to uh, Ljubljana and scam. And then probably go home and tell their families that they're businessmen. Who knows? We found another player, Krishna Yadav, that I spoke a little bit about earlier. Krishna was the right-hand man of the owner. Krishna did everything, but he pretty much tried to oversee the day-to-day -day operations because the owners would not show up. I actually saw the owners one time ever on CCTV. And I saw him in late 2022. There was a guy that was sitting in a room that never had people in it. I watched that room every single day. I never saw a person in it. But one day I saw this guy sitting there talking to two people. And I was like, that guy has to be somebody. So I kept asking the feet on the street. I said, who is this guy? I need to figure out who that is. And I found out about a name, Cherry. And Cherry was the owner. So I didn't have confirmation that this guy on the screen in call center two was Cherry, but I had a really good feeling that it was. So I would send over photos to the person that was on the street and they would get back to me with, hey, this is the person's name. This is what they do, et cetera. So it was really helpful, but they only knew the name Cherry. They didn't know, they didn't know anything really else until one day they sent me a photo and they said, is this the person you're talking about? And I said, yes. And they said, that's Cherry. So I was able to confirm the person in call center two on that one video I saw was Cherry. He was the owner. And of course, I knew nothing else about the guy. It wasn't his real name. It could have been short for something. I have no idea. So I wanted to figure that out because I wanted to get the boss arrested. Cherry was the top guy. It gets me excited thinking about I was getting places 
because he told me that Cherry was connected to some politician in the area and that politician was helping protect him. You have this guy that's running call centers in different buildings, different hotels, trying to hide. So my next goal was figure out who these other guys were to get them arrested. And now we've laid out this whole path, you know, kind of in the beginning of, of 2023 in January and February of victim information, names, social media of the scammers, of the top scammers at the place, physical locations of this whole group of scammers. And then we found out the name or the pseudo name of the owner and we tied them to a photo. So we've got this great structure now built out of information and now it's time hopefully for them to start to get in trouble, get raided, arrested, you name it. It's April 5th, 2023. And I was told by law enforcement that today was going to be the day of the raid. So we got the whole team here ready to go to capture the exact moment when it all happens. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Today's the day. It's a lovely Wednesday. It's a lovely Wednesday. It's a lovely Wednesday. I love Wednesdays now, man. It's a beautiful day to watch a raid. I was thinking uh, on the way here, I remember you and me sitting there with P with that one victim. And it was the most like insane feeling of like desperation. And uh, to finally be here, however many months later, seven, seven months, something like that. To finally we'll get some actual payback on these suckers, dude. <laughs> Hopefully everything goes according to plan today. Because if it does, this is gonna be, I would say probably the biggest day in scammer payback history. This is the kind of stuff you dream of. <laughs> it's true. This one, uh, this one, there is plenty of evidence. We were just talking about how the scam baiter video where they raided him, but there's footage of them like rolling out computers yep. prior to well, so, like, the raid. They were getting us, they raided them one time and then they came back. And then they were working on a second raid because they have a local guy in police or whatever that did the first raid where the electricity cut off or whatever. And then you've got the second one, they were going to get them again. And then all of a sudden one day they're going on the CCTV and the scammers are like pulling out crates with the computers on them and leaving and never came back. <clears throat> so they get, somebody tipped them off. Yeah, that's what happens. The local police tip them off, then they get everything they need out of there and then nothing really happens. So that's why this is gonna be big because this is going the extra level the extra mile to make sure that these guys can't escape before getting arrested. All right, make sure everything's turned off for now because we're all hitting them and... Yeah, I was about to ask. But okay, yeah. Got shut off. I was so, gonna say. Um, I mean, sometimes there's intermittent weather and mm -hmm. like issues with internet. Okay. So. It shuts down, or we just overloaded it. We'll see. This is our guy. This third of the first, 20 to 27. Well, on 228 at 1 p.m. on 228, I got on the guy's computer. Huh. So, just trying to figure out. 14. I saw them, like, literally 30 minutes ago, I had to stream up in this room. Yeah, I was looking, I was on this VM midnight, and I switched back to this VM and everything was just gone. Like, all, it looked like this, so I don't know. It, it just said, like, device offline, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the stream, I'm trying to see if somebody might have... Dude, if they really just turned off the... Like, do you think it could have been I don't think... Wait, 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 you can't... You can I don't just think so. Can't you just, I don't think it was a raid, because we were watching it, we were watching the cameras yeah. live. Everything's recorded. So, Everything's recorded. Um, can't you ping the DVR? But all their, the but all their computers are off too. Yeah, the computers oh, are off. No, it's a network issue. Or, yeah. yeah. Or, so either the network is <clears> on or what? But they said they weren't going to turn stuff off. They uh, like that's what they were talking about as far as to keep the integrity of like systems and stuff like that, not to turn everything off. Right. They would. they didn't get like tipped off or something. Nah, because it's supposed to be both of these at the same time. It is okay. I'm gonna make a call. Yeah, I'm very second. concerned that their cameras are off, I guess. Nah, let's just hope for the best. It'll come if back. there's a raid today. What do you think? I don't know, man. I wanna believe that it's uh, just some kind of network issue. 
Is the one that turned off the one that we saw the bribe going out of? The shadiest of the shady. I honestly don't think it's going to happen today, based off the intel I've been given. But we at least have some stuff recorded in place, you know. Ready We're to ready. Go. So do you think? Do you think when it does happen that we'll be told? Based on what you know? Or do you think that it's going to happen and we're just going to be scrambling? You know? Because of the uh, the government over there. It's up to like them. And they can tell us. They cannot. Like, we can't pressure them to do one way or the other. Mm -hmm. You would hope that, hey, we've helped you guys out this far. That they would want to cooperate back to, towards us. But I'm kind of playing the telephone game now at this point. So. Yeah. I wish I had definitive answers. Yeah, it's um, just a bunch of waiting, man. Yeah. Waiting and hoping. Okay. Right, I'm going to call the uh, proper authorities really fast because they've called right, me. Head around. I'll be right back in like a second. <clears throat> Hello? Hey, what's up? Hey, sir. Um, the uh, security guy came down and got him. And then he went up the stairs. We're trying to see if he went into the call center. But... Um, we haven't seen, I haven't seen him inside the call center area. I would, you know, they don't, obviously they don't work for us. So we don't, uh, we can't take we can advice and offer guidance and, you know, and push and, you know, try to persuade one thing or another. But at the end of the day, you know, we can't tell them what to do or what not to do. I that they're going to coordinate with us given the way we've been communicating. Plan for anything. You know, worst case scenario, they hit the place without telling us. Yeah, that is the worst case scenario. Well, the hardest thing is we're trying to like make sure we're yeah, available just, uh, when they're like gonna raid or whatever. Because I mean, you're, it's very, very and important. I, I, I expect people, people know when they're gonna do it. I know. Look, we're doing everything we can. Um, you know, it's not a. This, this isn't an exact science. You know, any they're. You know, they can do stuff without telling us, you know, unfortunately. I don't expect that that's going to happen. I'm just letting you know that there's always that potential. So, um, you know, I would prepare for anything. But I expect that they're going to coordinate with us. So here's my update. The biggest issue is that we are supplying information. We're not calling the shots. So we don't get to tell people what to do, when to do. We are kind of at <clears throat> their mercy on that. So the hopes are that we get some information as to hopefully when they're going to raid, but we just don't know. Um, so it's just a lot of sitting and waiting and hoping. Good morning. What's going on? I mean, I don't know what to think at this point because they're pretty much saying um, they have to evaluate things, which I don't know what that means. So we don't have a date or a time or anything. So we're just sitting around with our thumb up our ass, waiting right. for India to come to they have as to, they steal more money from I them. was going to say, every single day that they don't do something, there are more and more victims. And then I think people will say, well, can't you just stop the victims all day long, every day, every second, every single computer, every single scammer, every single person? I could if I were like 80 or 100 people, um, but I can't. Yeah, we just don't have the manpower to combat an entire call center full of... Yes. It's April 11th, 2023 and everything in the call center is back on. We can see their cameras and their computers. I was made aware by law enforcement that they wanted to do the raid later on in the day, which would mean afternoon for us, early morning for the scammers. Can you walk up and just give me a... <laughs> can you give me a, this is a call center. <laughs> this call center is about to be raided. No, oh, it's going down, let me get out of this shot. It's like a party. Waiting for the main event. Mm -hmm. 
It's like, it is kind of like a viewing party for yeah. a movie. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a, there's a countdown. This is Santosh, according to yeah, my P. somewhere. Santosh? Yeah. In the red shirt there? Yeah. That's walking? Okay. Uh, and then we got that <laughs> head. <laughs> is that his name? That's his, that's what, that's what I don't remember what his name is. This is like, what's what, like eight months in the making. It takes a lot to like, literally get something like this shut down without the corrupt police showing up and just letting them go. Hey guys, we're gonna throw some handcuffs on you and then we'll get you out of here the same day. They were just throwing a lot of money too. Like boatloads of money. So they reached out about the raid at uh, 4.30 our time yesterday. They're like, we wanna hit it right now. That was the time that they said that yesterday. So that might be the time they say it today. We just okay. don't know. Hour time? 4.30 yeah, hour PM, time. Yeah. obviously, yeah, okay. So, uh, if it happens, that's freaking killer, you know. Or it might be before and then, I don't freaking know. They well, we, got the, we got them up in the uh, other rooms too. Okay. Yeah. So we should be able to see them pulling into the building. Yep. And then also we have Midnight's recording all the cameras yeah. too as backup. We've got Premiere on this screen here. Cutting up 24 hour stream. And then we've got pointing at stuff. scammers <laughs> and that's on this screen. It's just so funny to me that it's just like kind of, it's I'm just a, there. I've been watching them, like all these, I've been watching them as they pull up and walk in, not knowing that it is D-Day. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at the CCTV and I'm like, guys, I'm like, Cherry is there. Like the, the call center owner is there, which is crazy. I'd never seen him at call center one. I saw him at that call center two. He's never shown up but he showed up at call center one. And I'm like, if, if today's a day to get them, they know that Cherry is the boss. They know that what Cherry looks like. And when I say they, our law enforcement in uh, India, India knows who Cherry is. They know his face and they know that he's at this location. Like I'm, I'm sending up smoke signals, everything. Be right there. The mustache, the hair, the uh, ring on the right. Is that not Cherry? That was for sure. It does look know. like him. It looks like him, man. <laughs> is that not Cherry? That mustache is hard look, to miss. That's him. That's the freaking owner. Oh, dude. he's even, he's even <laughs> grooming that's it right the there. Owner. Is that not Cherry? Oh, that's oh, Cherry. That's him. That's him. Oh that's my him. God. That's he's the owner. A, yeah. Oh my gosh, they better go in today. I know. Dude. That's, that's it. They've got to get him. That's it. I'm going <laughs> to make the call again him. because I'm making the 911 call. Tell him. <clears throat> They're here. Dude, they just need to eat. I don't even care if they don't hit the second one. If they hit this one and get this dude, that's the guy. The dual hey Raja. <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta be him, right? Yeah. Like, dude, it's like textbook with the facial hair especially. And like the curly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if it's like, not him, that is an insane resemblance. But they're all stopping to talk with yeah, him. Yeah, no. I was gonna say, you wouldn't be paying this much attention to one guy right here if it wasn't the owner. Agreed. What I am going to say is that it would be a shame if the Indian government doesn't get this guy because it's the freaking owner of the company. The guy that's running the entire thing, financing the entire thing is at the act. This is the first time I've ever even seen him at the actual hotel. Honestly, Midnight, the amount of evidence that is against them, the amount of victims, I'm telling you, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens. They literally make those PDFs with like the victim address. Like they make these PDFs that they're pretending to be FTC and then they send them to the victims. And that's how I collect all the victims every single time. And I have this plethora of information of all their victims. It's like huge treasure trove of it, treasure trove of it. We're, we're asking a lot of stuff. <laughs> I know, trust me. I want them to go. They have, they have, it's, a, it's a perfect opportunity right now. I know. I'm like, I was, I saw it. I was really frustrated. <sighs> Trying to find some way to be optimistic about it. I'm glad that, you know, we're finding out ahead of time this time instead of just being ghosted and wondering what happened and then reconnecting like days later. I mean, that's a, um, that's so a huge L, dude. For them to be able to, well, for them to be like, oh, we're going in yesterday, and then to say like, we can't today, just freaking, this well, guy is sitting duck gotta, right here. Think too. I know, 
but it's not just a person doing it. They have to get full teams. So a lot of coordination goes into this, um, like a lot. So, and they're trying to do it with without anybody finding out. Any, you know, trying to keep the whole thing insulated. So, trying to tell people, hey, getting people in the right place. Be like, you know, imagine trying to get a group of, of people that you work with in the same place together um, without any heads up on them doing it, without anybody having a heads up. I mean, it takes some planning. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to, I know that's not good news. There's an ideal situation right now, but, you know, let's, let's, uh, we can't do anything about it, unfortunately. Um, you know, we can't make them act. So I'm trying to, I, I pumped them full of incentive. And said, okay, I'll keep, uh, let me, our, our, you know, we're going to lose visibility uh, come the end of the week. And I'll, you know, I'll let you know when we're going to be back online. I mean, I, the main guy is like the kingpin of the entire thing should be like that has paid off pol- or politicians and mayors and paid off police. It should be the freaking like cherry on top, no pun intended. The entire time that I've watched this call center, he's never been there. So. Well, he's been, is this, is this the other call center? Yes, he's never been at this call center and I've seen him one other time at the oh, other okay. one. I've never seen this guy. So I've seen this guy two times in, in 10 months. Okay. Well, let me see what, uh, let me pass this along. Um, and, you know, see if there's anything, anything they can do. And, and I will, uh, you know, it's not good news, man, but, uh, that's, that's, there's not much else that we can really do with it at this point when they, they just aren't willing, not, not willing, but they have something else that came up that it's, you know, they, they aren't able to. After I told them everything, like, here's the guy that you guys want, the owner of the thing and said, um, that they have some kind of fire or emergency and that it could be up to 72 hours for them to get back and like do anything, yada, yada, yada. That they had like had some BS emergency come up. So, um, hey, they're really <clears throat> pushing it back then, huh? It's very demoralizing. I am not very happy right now. Do you have that Hong Kong account? And do you have the Havala person? Do you think that that person was tied to this? And do you have the exact IP address? Do you know the phone number that the victim called when they got scammed and the text now number that they called the second time? Do you know the name of Jimmy Martin actually? And what's his Indian phone number? Do you have any of his social media? That would be really big. Dude, I've sent social media photos. I've sent um, Instagrams. I've sent WhatsApp. I've sent phone numbers. I've sent addresses. I've sent freaking all this information uh, money laundering stuff, we stop scams, wire transfers, Havala, physical addresses that are tied to the US to this call center. The guy there, literally there, the top guy sitting there. We had insiders, we had someone travel travel to Punjab because they told us. We had someone fly there to be there. Oh no, so, uh, 72 hours. When this video comes out, what people are going to be able to take away from it is you guys are going to be able to see, I'm going to talk to camera, you guys are going to be able to see all of the evidence. We're going to line it all up for you. You're going to have everything that the Indian government currently has right now. And you're going to look at that and you're going to say, how could you not do something when you have all of that information set out in front of you? And we're left asking the exact same question. We don't know. Because this is the second time now in the last five days that we thought that this was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, nothing. Forget the ones that are freshers that don't know what they're doing. They're just trying to make a buck. Like, forget those people. But the, all the managers and that cherry guy in particular, like, screw them, man. I could be a lot more angry, I guess. But I'm just very disappointed that this has happened. Let me see if I can get it. I think that uh, <coughs> this is going to be yeah, let's set either the worst story told or the greatest story told because the amount of ups and downs that you go through trying to catch these guys, you know, it really sucks.
So I received a message at 12.34 a.m., which I was asleep, of course, because I needed to sleep, from the midnight. And he said, I need you to message me as soon as possible. It's worse than, like, is the raid happening or not? Um, as you guys may or may not know, that both of the cameras went down yesterday, or they were not on yesterday when I got back. Nobody's told me anything about this call center since I've been gone. <clears throat> the cameras were not on. Um, I went and checked. No, none of the computers were on. I was thinking, well, maybe that's because of Ramadan, the end of Ramadan, all that Eid is another, it's the ending of Ramadan, that's another big thing. We looked back because we've been recording history of what's been going on in the cameras, just as a backup. And we went through the backup, and in the second call center, it was showing that they were taking out computers from the call center. Yeah. And in the first call center, they were in there and supposedly, I don't know if working or not, but what I've been told, I haven't seen all the footage yet, but what I've been told was that they were not scamming anybody. They were just in there and then the, all that stuff got shut off. So we have zero access, zero cameras, zero computers. And in one of the call centers, all the computers have been taken out. So, um, there's a saying called strike while the iron is hot and the hot the the oil couldn't have been hot enough to strike on that iron when the owner and his wife and his kid were in the call center and we could have gotten them and India didn't do anything and now supposedly these guys are just gone I don't know they could be moving another office who knows but it looks pretty uh, bleak right now. India, the folks that we were trying to work with in India are like not acting. I'm I'm not hearing this firsthand. I'm hearing this from the telephone game, so I don't know. But not acting as if they have done something wrong or there's been some type of a leak. But they were literally going to raid today, and they've had they've had surveillance around both of the call centers to see if there's activity and stuff, but they've not seen any activity out of the second call center because nobody's freaking there <laughs> because they left. That's why you don't see any activity. And you feed these people this all this information. Again, I've talked about this the other day. Feed them all this information, they want more. They want more, they want more. They want the blood type. They want how many siblings do they have. They want the bank account. They want, it, like, they want all this stuff and they don't just go and take action. And this inaction is why people get scammed all the time. And these guys, there might be a possibility that they show up somewhere else and then they plug in those computers and we find them. Or there could be um, no possibility of that. And these computers go to the, the garbage can and we never hear of them ever again. And they've made their money and then they're done. At this point, we're journalists. We're not hackers and vigilantes, we're journalists. And we're showing the world the corruption that's going on. This points to corruption for me at the highest levels. Um, I have no nothing else to say about it outside that it's probably corruption. That's what I would assume. I, I was so close to giving up actually mentally. You have, it's going to happen this day, it doesn't happen. It's going to happen this day, it doesn't happen. The center shuts down. You lose all access. You lose camera access. You gain access again. We have feet on the street giving us good information, credible information. And all I wanted was a little bit of hope. I remember reaching out to the person I was speaking to and I said, do you have anything? I need something, please. And that person told me that Cherry and Krishna knew I was onto them. They knew that I was onto them, specifically Scammer Payback. They wanted to see what information we had on them and they wanted to see what I was going to expose. I said, man, screw that. I'm not gonna put anything out yet. I talk about patience a lot and, I, and even though I had little hope, I still wanted to be patient with the process because I had already been doing things for so long that what's waiting a little bit longer, you know? It is May 5th. Yeah, me and Brandon are really sick now. Um, so every single day since the scammers um, have left the call center, I check the cameras to see if they come back. Now, yesterday there was a ray of hope because I saw this camera 
actually had an arrow next to it, which meant that it was like online, but they had made, possibly changed the password. Fast forward to today, I got a message from Nano saying that two of the computers were online. I subsequently got another message from Midnight saying that their computers are back online. So I went to check, we saw two computers on, not all of them, but then I went into the cameras and I saw all their freaking cameras were on. So we're checking things out. Um, here's Alex, one of the main, main scammer. He's kind of a boss, he's not the top guy, but he's one of the bosses and he's helping to get everything set up. So as you can see here, they've like ripped stuff out. They just got really spooked and they ripped all the computers, everything out of the walls, all of that. But you can see also that they have gotten back to scamming already. So they're not full force, uh, but they've upgraded their computers to Windows 10 and we don't have access. We have access to a couple of these in here. We're trying to figure out which ones, but they are scamming currently and they're getting back into the process. So we're gonna keep watching and hopefully we find some more systems this was updated on April 18th, which is a day before um, they all left. The call center never came back. But Jimmy Martin here is one of the closers and he was absent. So he knew somebody told them, I think. Somebody leaked. Yeah. The raid was coming. Somebody leaked. We don't know who, but we were this close to getting them. May 23rd. I'm watching call center one's cameras and I see the call center owner, Cherry. If you're wondering who that is, that is the owner. This is his third day straight. He comes at the, a certain time at night, third day straight. And um, we've been trying to tip off Indian authorities to do something. We've been trying to tip off Indian authorities to do something. And he still sits there every single day. What our goal is, is to get this dude raided. Just even if it's him, I don't care send two people in and arrest this dude and then we will just expose the other ones because we have all their information anyway so this is the main guy that deserves it right here just sitting there on his phone so talking with my guy that was out on the street there he told me that some of the guys were staying in an apartment complex, a really nice one called Centra Greens. Krishna Yadav was there. Santosh was there. There were some other folks. And these guys were living big over there. It, it got me a little bit more fired up because I saw the scammers in Centra Greens. I had the exact location of where their apartment was, the floor, the room number, everything. Centra Greens, Maple 2 901. And I've got an image that definitely shows that they were way up there on the ninth floor. I was also given information that because Cherry and Krishna knew I was on their tail, Krishna went to make a nonprofit and they were gonna try their best to either make themselves look good or start to move their money over there because they didn't wanna be caught. And one of the things that fires me up is these scammers thinking that they can get away with it and they think that they can flaunt some type of lifestyle to the world as if they did it, but they stole it from innocent, hardworking people. So I went into every live stream in June and I put Santosh's face out there. I talked about the call center. They had already knew that I was onto them, so it didn't really matter at that point. So I asked my person, I said, I said, what else can you give me? Can you please push? What else is going on? And then, I got the best piece of information in the entire investigation that I got. So essentially, Cherry and his guys, they had a third call center. And this was about 10 minutes away from Centra Greens. And I got that location. I knew exactly where they were and I knew where they were hiding, but they were also scamming still. And they thought that they could run away from me, but we found them and we passed that information over. Now, India law enforcement was able to scope out the place and they knew that there was people going in and out and they started watching that location and they were ready to pounce in July. I think you got some good news. Dude, I've got, I've got a few more of these, man. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Come on, baby. Come on. 
Are you, are you streaming before I swear? No, I'm, yeah. no, I'm not streaming, so Oh yeah, let's yeah. Santos got him! Woo! Santos is, oh, let's go! I simply wish that I had the ability to see through this mask. I simply wish that I had words to say or champagne to pop for this occasion. I feel like throwing this bottle of fireball across the office because I'm so pumped. So this is a word that I haven't been able to say because it would give away that we've been watching them for a year. But the Sultanate call center out of Ludhiana, Punjab, India has officially been raided today. And it's gonna lead us to Cherry, their owner. He was not there, but my boy Santosh Yadav has been arrested today plus 30 of his other colleagues, and I would assume Alex and all those other freaking idiots. But we have evidence on them. We have CCTV on them. They've been raided. They're arrested. A lot of people have been saved today because of these freaking idiots getting raided. So it's a huge win. Oh, I'm so excited. Woo! Somebody get excited. Woo! 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 To uh, everyone that worked on it in our in our little squad and stuff, congratulations. And this is one of many raids and arrests and dang, it feels freaking good. So I'm about to pass out. July 20th was the time for the raid and it actually happened that day and it was the best feeling because I had been telling the scammers that winter is coming for a very long time. I had called them and told them winter was coming. I had stayed so late at my office stopping scams for people that will never know it was me. And that's fine. This is what my job is. This is what my calling is. And I did all of this to protect people and show the world that we are fighting back against these criminals. The sense of relief once we did get the raid was unlike anything else. I, I was so happy. I almost didn't have words. And like, we got them. And you see a news story. There's a press conference. This isn't something for show. The Punjabi and Lujana, the, the police chief, and all the folks that were helping the police chief out. And you see all the scammers in front, and they've got their heads down, and the, and the police chief is saying, head up, head up. Be ashamed. Put your head up so everyone can see you're scamming people. They were so happy that they got this, this raid and they executed on it. And it was amazing to see Krishna Yadav in that front row with his head down after he pretty much spat on the grave of a deceased uh, fresher, essentially, at that call center that had overdosed. Krishna then told the police who the owner of the call center was. And his name is Chanpreet Singh. Cherry's name is Chanpreet Singh. We have the call center raid in the end of July. You fast forward a little bit and we have the People's Call Center. We're down in Tampa and I find out information that lo and behold, there was a politician that was working with Cherry. He was a half owner and he was making money off this call center and also protecting Cherry, I'm sure. I'll tell you it again. Arrested Congress leader, the racket kingpin, Lujana police, Sahil Kapoor, alias Papal Kapoor of Chitti Colony, was arrested by police for his alleged involvement in functioning of a fake call center. One of the accused who was arrested in connection with the fake call center scam is a Congress leader and was supervising the entire racket in Lujana, police said on Monday. Oh, Whoa. So Cherry was oh, connected to this dude who was giving them protection and oh all this stuff. Dude, oh, it really does go that deep. It really does, man. Holy so crap, we did it, dude. We did it, bro. Holy That's crap, nuts. dude. I got your hand in there, but not your hand. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Like, this is good awesome. job, dude. Um, if you're on a call, you can mute just because I don't want to mess up your call. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah was arrested by the police for his alleged involvement in functioning a fake call center. Um, one of the accused who was arrested in connection with the fake call center scam is a Congress leader in Ljubljana. Sahil Kapoor was allegedly supervising the entire racket in Ljubljana. The police suspect him for having direct links with the main accused operating the racket in the country. So he was recently promoted to a block one president of the district Congress and later resigned for personal issues and tried to flee the area yeah. and they found him and he's in jail now i would assume so so i'm not saying there's not corruption we everybody knows that but 
like the the police they're taking it really seriously and they got this dude so um that that was pretty freaking cool so sahil thought that he could just you know stay in the shadows make a bunch of money and then protect the rest of the guys without anybody knowing but at the end he got arrested and he's going to face his time as well now i want to close everything out this investigation was built with the intent of getting these scammers in jail for a very long time for the crimes that they've committed not just in one day and out the other with a slap on a wrist. After the raid and the arrest of these scammers, I was invited to a global anti-scam conference in Lisbon, Portugal, where I spoke in front of government agencies, law enforcement officials, and other individuals that want to stop cybercrime and end scams. I was able to give the entire group an idea of how this criminal organization worked and also how we were able to bring them down. If you're a member of this channel, we're going to be posting the entire keynote address so you can see what we talked about. There are documents online where there are all the court filings specific to each scammer that was raided and arrested on that day in July. And we specifically want to focus in and we're following with regards to Krishna Yadav, Chanpreet Singh, and Sahil Kapoor. They are going to be facing their day in court. And while they may be out on bail, they were in jail for a number of months. Chanpreet Singh's defense per the court documents was that they had already arrested 30 other scammers and he had no idea that any of this had happened. Now he was ratted out by someone in the group, obviously, and they gave his name and information over. And I think there's enough evidence to show that this guy knew of everything and was benefiting greatly. Now it's time for India to finish the work that they started. They need to sentence these criminals and make sure that they face the jail time they deserve.